Let's go ahead and get started with our notes about mass and weight. So the first thing we want to talk about is mass of an object. And we want to talk about what is mass? Well, mass is just the amount of matter an object has. So in other words, mass is how much of something an object has. So for instance, let's say we have a tennis ball. A tennis ball has a certain shape. It's made up of all these little atoms. No matter where we take that tennis ball, it's still going to be made up of all those atoms. We could take it to the moon. It would still be made up of all those atoms. The unit of measurement for mass is going to be kilograms. And we're going to abbreviate this by kg. And just a reminder, kilograms are equal to 1,000 grams. So one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. The symbol for mass is going to be the lowercase letter m. And the mass of an object will never change. And the reason it's never going to change is because the amount of matter an object has does not change. So for instance, if I were to go to the moon, I would have the same amount of matter or the same atoms in me as I would on Earth. And because I have the same atoms as Earth, my mass is going to be the same. So mass will never, ever change in physics. Now we're going to talk about inertia. Inertia is an object's resistance to the change in its state of motion. So what we mean by that is that an object is going to keep doing whatever it's doing. That might be moving, so an object in motion will stay in motion. Or that might mean being at rest, so an object at rest will stay at rest. The more mass an object has, the more inertia it's going to have. So in other words, the heavier an object is, the harder it's going to be to change its state of motion. Think about your house. Your house is very heavy. If you tried to push your house, it would not move. But think about a ball. If you were to push a ball, it would easily move. You could easily kick a ball left to right. If you tried kicking your house, your house would not move left to right. So which do you think is easier to stop? A semi-truck or a motorcycle? Well, it's obviously the motorcycle, because the motorcycle has less mass. So when we're talking about inertia, we're really just talking about mass. More mass, more inertia, less mass, less inertia. Again, inertia is just saying an object's resistance to change its motion. So if an object is at rest, it will stay at rest. If it's in motion, it will stay in motion. The heavier the object, the more inertia. Let's talk about weight of an object. Weight of an object is referring to the amount of force due to gravity that is pulling down on an object. The unit of measurement for weight is going to be newtons. The reason being that weight is a force and the units of force are newtons. We'll abbreviate with a capital letter N. The symbol for weight is going to be Fg. Sometimes we're going to refer to weight as just force gravity because it's the force due to gravity, just like we said. The weight of an object will vary from planet to planet. The reason being, different planets have different gravities. Therefore, the weights are going to be different. Gravitational pull is how much force pulls down on an object per kilogram of mass. The units of measurement for gravitational pull are going to be newtons per kilogram, so capital N over kg. The symbol is just a lowercase g, and that just stands for gravity. On Earth, our gravitational pull is going to be 9.8 newtons per kilogram. On other planets, it will have different values. On the moon, it will be smaller. The moon is around 1.7 newtons per kilograms. Normal force and force gravity will have the same force if and only if that object is on a flat surface. These two forces are going to cancel out when they're on a flat surface. Therefore, the net force will be zero in that y direction. And net force just means the total force. So let's say we had an object here and a force gravity pointed down, and a force normal pointed up. Let's say our object had a force gravity of 10 newtons, 
Well, if it's on a flat surface, the force normal would also be 10 newtons. These two would balance each other out. And by balance, we mean that if we were to add these up, so we'd have 10 plus negative 10 would just give us zero newtons. This is negative because it's pointing down. This is positive because it points up. Now let's talk about our equation. So the equation that we're going to use is Fg equals m times g. And again, Fg just stands for the force of gravity. m stands for the mass of the object. And g stands for the gravitational pull on Earth. In this case, that's just 9.8 newtons per kilogram. If we were on a different planet, though, that little g would have a different value. But for the sake of all of our problems, unless it's mentioned otherwise, we can assume that G will just be 9.8. Normal force does not always equal the gravitational force. We said it before that that's only the case when it's on a flat surface, but it is not always the case. So please, please, please pay attention to this. Super important. Let's go through our problem solving steps. First thing we want to do is write down our givens and our unknowns. And this is something we should be doing with every type of problem that we approach, whether it's forces or in future units like kinematics and circuits. Next, we want to write down the equation, plug in our variables into that equation, and then solve for our unknowns. Make sure that we're showing all of our work, we have the correct units, this way, we'll be able to receive full credit, but also it's easier to identify where a problem went wrong if we show these steps. Here's our first example. A student has a mass of 80 kilograms. Determine the weight of the student. Well, it's telling me right here that 80 kilograms is my mass, so this is my M. It wants me to determine the weight. So again, we said weight is Fg. Okay, and then it doesn't tell us our little g, but we can assume that this student is on Earth, so little g on Earth is just 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And here's my givens all laid out, just like I had them above. M is 80 kilograms, g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and Fg is unknown. Next, we want to write our equation, Fg equals m times g. Then from there, we want to plug in. Our m is 80, our g is 9.8, so we're just going to multiply these two together and solve. We end up with Fg equals 80 times 9.8. Final answer, our force gravity, or our weight, is equal to 784 newtons. Let's look at our last example. A student has a weight of 850 newtons. So this is telling me weight, so this is my force gravity. Determine the mass of the student. So it wants me to determine that, so I don't know what my mass is. Again, I can assume that this student is on Earth, so my G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Go ahead, list all those variables down below. Force gravity is 850 little g is 9.8, and mass is unknown. Here's my equation. Plug everything in again. This time I see I have 850 on the left, g on the right, and my unknown right here. So instead of multiplying, I'm going to have to divide this time. Plug in my numbers, and then I divide by 9.8 on each side. Simplify, and I get mass is equal to 86 kilograms. Again, just a reminder when you're doing this, make sure that you write down your variables first, and then you write down your equation, and you just plug them in. If you're confused on what variable the numbers are talking about, look at the units, okay? So the units for our variables are all different. Weight is going to have the units of newtons. The next one would be mass and mass will always have the units of kilograms. And then lastly, little g 
is just gravity. And that one we can always assume is just 9.8 when we are on Earth. Last little piece of advice as well, super important, is you need to remember that mass does not change. Mass does not change because mass is the total amount of matter that an object has. No matter where that object may be, whether it's on Earth, in space, on the moon, on Venus, it still has that same total amount of matter. What is different, though, is the gravitational pull on that object. So the gravitational pull is impacted by the planet. So if the object is on Earth or the moon or Venus, all of those places have different gravitational pulls. And our gravitational pull is going to impact our weight. So weight will change. Weight depends on gravity. And lastly, inertia depends on mass. Inertia is the object's resistance to the change in motion. So if an object is at rest, it wants to stay at rest. The heavier the object, the more likely that will happen. The lighter the object, the less likely. Therefore, more mass, more inertia. When thinking about inertia, just use common sense. Really exaggerate the two situations. For instance, would it be easier to stop a tennis ball that is being thrown at you in the air or to stop a bowling ball that is being thrown at you in the air? Obviously, it is easier to stop a tennis ball. A tennis ball is lighter. So it's easier to change that motion. 